Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extension tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and use and connect to uh, Google Sheets API. Now this might actually apply to Google Drive and other APIs, but some of the most useful stuff we can get is from a Google Sheet, for example. So today I'm going to be showing you how to set it up on the developer account side of things and then how to integrate that into your extension uh, using the useful provided code. And we're going to be using the Node.js setup. Now, before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, where I'll also be posting the code for this, so you can try it out for yourself. Follow us there for coding updates, as well as down there on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, Smith tutorial ideas, hang out with some of our awesome members, and much more. And you can also check out the link below to become a channel member or supporter on YouTube, which comes with cool perks like Discord status badges and helps us out financially. And also in the description, check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. I think I've flashed this screen a few times, but it's okay for me to show it because these are just future tutorial ideas. But this is the uh, sheet that I want to connect to in this tutorial and get the data from it. But before we do all that, there is a little bit of a setup. We are essentially going to be modifying our extension testing extension, which has been used numerous times on this channel. And we're going to set it up so that we have access and the ability uh, to connect to Google Sheets. Okay, so I have a list here of things we need to first go over before we can actually have it working. The first thing is that we need to set up our project uh, through Google. So we need to create or select a Google Cloud project if you haven't created one already. Um, we can do this by basically going to this link here, console.cloud.google.com. And here you can see I have this basic test called localization test. It doesn't mean anything. This isn't for an actual project. This is just an interface I use to test uh, Google Sheets and to learn it. So what you'll want to do is set up a project just like this. You can create a new one if you need to my first project, whatever you want to call it. And now that we have that, that's basically going to be the endpoint, which we're always going to connect to. After that, we need to get some credentials. So we'll go to the navigation menu, APIs and services, and go to credentials. Inside of here, you'll probably have a blank uh, listing of everything. But what we're going to want to do is create a new OAuth 2.0 client for desktop. The OAuth2 client IDs are here. I'll go ahead and put this on the left side um, and just expand this so we can see it better. Um, and we're going to want to essentially create a new OAuth client ID. You can do this by clicking on create credentials, create a new OAuth client ID. And you want to make sure that you have it set to desktop app or desktop application, and then you can name it. Once that's set up, as you can see here, I have desktop client one. It's going to give you the option to click on it or to download it. We're simply going to want to download our OAuth client. And you're not going to be able to see on this screen because it's obviously my secret, but we're going to download the JSON. This is going to download a JSON file with your secret information inside of it. Um, as of right now, I'm just using this to test. So for security, this may not be the best method, but you're now going to have this JSON file downloaded. You're going to want to take that JSON file you just downloaded, go to your extension, in this case, extension testing, and paste it in the root folder of your extension. Then we'll go ahead and name it to client underscore secret. This is kind of required for the general setup. Now inside of here is personal information. So for now, we're just going to leave it closed. But this is one thing that you want to remember, you have this client secret. Now you're also going to see that I have node modules and these packages set up. That's because we're also going to need to set up Node.js, which we can do at this point. We've completed these first five steps. Now, if we look at the Node.js quick start guide, all we have to do is make sure we install this particular library to our extension. So I'm going to copy the code directly from the Node.js quick start guide. I'm going to CD into my extension path and just paste the code. Then we'll install it here. You'll also, of course, want to make sure if you're on Windows, in this case, you have launched command prompt as an administrator because uh, these folders are required to have administrative properties. Now, you can see now we have our node modules. 
our, our client secret, our package, and our package log JSON. Now, basically, our extension is set up to have the whole Google Sheets API inside of it. If I ever say Google Drive or something different, I do mean Google Sheets in this case, but this same process probably applies for the other ones. So if you're learning from this, you can probably do the other setups. Okay, now we can go ahead and open up our extension testing uh, code. And we're going to now see that we have a ton of stuff already pasted in here. This is going to be available in the description uh, in the GitHub link. So you can basically just open this up yourself. And obviously, I'm not going to include the client secret. That's something you've got to set up. Um, but it's going to basically just have uh, your normal main.js file, which is going to contain all of our important uh, Google Drive stuff. Your index.html doesn't need anything in it really. Just make sure you, of course, have CS interface if you need that and any other CSS or JS libraries. All the stuff we need is gonna be here in main.js. I'm not gonna go over each line and type it myself, but I'm gonna kind of go over in general what everything's doing. So first, globally, we want, to de we want to include FS, our file system. This is gonna allow us to read, write, and access the, C the JSON files that are required here. We're going to also get read line, require read line, and also const Google, we're gonna put it in these brackets here and require our Google API, which we installed uh, here through Node.js. After that, we're also going to want the path to our extension. That way we can have the path where we're going to refer to our client secret. We really need to make sure we know where our client secret file is because that's what kind of initializes the whole process of verifying uh, whether or not we can use um, Google Sheets in this case. So we have a bunch of libraries included from our node install. We have our OS extension path set globally as well. This is a Windows path, of course. The Mac one is slightly different, but we're keeping it simple here. Then under scopes, you're gonna notice that this actually looks a bit different than the sheet itself. This is because uh, in the example, it's dot read only. This is uh, perfectly valid to use. If you use dot read only, you can only read the sheets. If you remove the read only, you're now able to edit. So it's kind of like a thing just to make sure you don't accidentally mess up your Google Sheets. Uh, but in this case, we're going to remove it so we can read, write, and edit our sheets. After that, I have a CS interface in case if I need to go ahead and use anything inside of JSX, but I don't believe we actually do in this case. Uh, or maybe we just do it to get the system path here. So we're then going to set a const token path. Again, a lot of this came with the code and I just kind of modified it to make it work. Uh, for this, this is where we're going to store our actual user token uh, once we've done the first time setup. And we're gonna do this by getting our system path to our documents. And we're just gonna create a file called creds.json. I already have a creds.json, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and then Basically, that'll make sure that we have the first time setup. If you ever want to try the first time setup of this, which is kind of you're going to notice is a little annoying, uh, just delete that creds.json file. And again, obviously, in the example, they're giving a different path to the credentials path. They have it all defined up here. And in my case, I just want to have it in my documents. Um, then we just have a bunch of code. Here we have the main authorized function. This is going to either basically make us authorized for the first time we launch it. Uh, to make sure we have everything connected. Otherwise, it's gonna come back and we're gonna have a callback function, which is gonna be our main function. Um, in the example, it's called list majors because it gives you an example spreadsheet with students and their majors. But in this case, we have one called main function. We'll get there in just a second. In authorize, this is where the main authorization happens. It's gonna make sure it has our client secret and all that information. Basically, all you need to know in this section is that you're gonna try and get a token based on your token path. Um, then if you get a successful token, you're going to set the credentials to that. I have a global auth setup in case if I need to use the same authorization object later, you don't have to do this, but then we have a callback using our OAuth client. And that callback is again, going to main function or list majors in the case of the actual example code. And you can see this is where the meat of everything happens. So basically what we're looking at here is an example here. This is just an example spreadsheet it wants you to use if you want. We need this code here between the D and the edit. That's our spreadsheet ID basically. We're inside of our main function, we're essentially going to paste our spreadsheet ID and you also can paste in a range. So in this case, I have sheet one and that contains the whole range of all of this. We can also select specific ranges uh, if we want to as well. But for now, I just have the whole spreadsheet the entire sheet one. 
Then uh, we have it set up to say rows equals our data basically and the values of that data. Because what we're doing is we're calling spreadsheets or sheets.spreadsheets.values.get. These are the built-in functions to get. And then of course there are like write functions and things like that. But in this tutorial, we're just gonna use get because the main difficult part about setting up uh, Google Sheets in an extension is the setup itself. After that, the rest of the guides really do provide pretty much all the information you need. All you have to do is click on what you want to learn and find, find the code that is related to uh, the Node.js setup or something that looks similar to this formatting where we have sheets.spreadsheets, obviously referring to the Sheets API, all the spreadsheets within it, and then uh, the values within our current sheet. So finally, after all this, if we alert our rows a variable, this is what it's going to give us here. You can see I have scripting tutorials, extension tutorials, plugin tutorials, UXP. That is equating to my first row here. Then after that, we have another row with all of the names and stuff, and we can basically go through it like a CSV file. Um, but now I'm going to illustrate the first time setup, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So the first time we run it, it's going to take a second to load, and you're going to see this happen. So I've kind of set this up in a way that uh, is allowing us to make it work. Essentially, we need to authorize that we are doing this um, via logging into our Google account and accepting a bunch of stuff. It's um, basically the first setup and then we don't have to do this again. Um, under get new token is where I added this actual code myself. And this is gonna be code of course on include. And it's basically just a prompt to say, please input the authorization code from the browser URL. In the original code, let's see, what does it say? So essentially, what's gonna happen the first time you launch it, it's gonna pop this up. That means you know you need to paste something in here. So if we go over to our sign-in window that popped up here, we're just gonna sign into our account. And it's gonna give you this because we haven't verified the app with Google. I believe after you go through the verification process, then you can actually have this not display like this. But for now, we'll need to go to advanced and we're gonna go to our test, which it says is unsafe. Once you're here, we just need to click on continue so that we can trust this to see, edit, create, and delete all your Google Sheets spreadsheets. Click on continue. And once we have that set up, it's gonna look like something errored, but this is where we wanna get the code from. If I go ahead and full screen this, we want everything between code equals to right before ampersand scope. We're gonna copy that go back into After Effects and paste it into our auth code. Now you can see token has been stored to my documents under creds.json and immediately we're gonna get an alert of all of our data from our spreadsheet. This is an indication that we set it up successfully and you can see all the way down here, I have my creds.json. If I launch it again, I don't have to go through that same authorization process and it's simply going to load all of the data from my sheet. And with that, you can start messing around with the code and kind of learning the actual useful stuff about getting the, the rows, the values, and all of that. And you can start to manipulate them and mess around with getting different ranges and things like that, and really get into the Sheets API after your initial setup. One more quick tip, if you wanna set a specific range uh, on your sheet, you can add an exclamation mark and then the range numbers afterward. So let's go ahead I have so many tabs open, I probably shouldn't. Let's go ahead and choose, maybe we just want the scripting tutorials here, right? So let's get the range C2, is that it? I guess it's technically under A, right? So it'd be A2 or A3 to A34. So in here I can say A2 to A34. And that should give me just a vertical slice, I believe. I launched the extension. You can see we get scripting tutorials and then all of my actual scripting tutorial ideas, which is super nice. If I wanted to move over a row, I could just go to D2 uh, to D34, which would then put me, I believe, at all of my extension tutorials. So we can save that and relaunch it. And now we have all of my extension tutorials listed. So those are the basics on how to set up the Google Sheets API um, with an Adobe extension. 
Um, in this case, it is the Sheets API, but this same kind of process should apply to many of the other Google APIs in terms of setting up your project, setting up OAuth, as well as setting it up to get your tokens and all of that stuff in the extension. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub where you can also get this super useful code, which I've mostly already set up for you. Follow us there for coding updates, as well as in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description as well by becoming a member or supporter at these two different levels to give you cool perks and support us financially. And speaking of which, you can also do so in the description by looking at the links for AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool tools I make. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.